Okay. Create a terrain. Let's not do large this time. Let's do medium. So that's a 1K by 1K terrain. Should be better for doing a video. Um, it uh, will be faster. Okay, we will use the Alpine Meadow as before. And we will use the same runtime environment. Okay, and then we'll go back to planes again. I think it was the third one that I used, this one. And then we're going to make it a little less extreme and make it a little more flat in the middle here. Okay, you don't need to be entirely flat for CD uh, because it will blend into the terrain and so on. Um, but you know, you, you don't people don't build cities in really busy area in really um, hilly areas um, so you know you want to be cognizant of that and have what's a reasonably uh, a, a, an area that would be reasonable to expect a city to uh, to grow up all right so uh, let's also move the camera um, so that we've got some view of what's actually happening uh, where is the camera under runtime. Okay, a player, and there's the fly cam. So I'm going to kill the UI as well because I really don't like that UI coming up. So let's go move the camera to where we're going to put our sissy. Kind of around here, I think would be good. Shift Control F. Um, all right, so. I will do the same as I did before, just so that uh, I don't have to do too much editing. So, STS window, uh, make sure that you have imported the um, the City 2 integration. In my case, it says it's already imported. It's important to import it before um, creating your City because that creates some bugs and so on. We're going to come back to that later on. Now we go to our City editor and we click find or create we have a city graph in the scene now and let's turn our nodes and cells on and let's do it again so let's start down here uh, let's have a node here shift right click a node here a node here and then we'll go maybe out to here oops shift right click and then to here Alright, it's just froze up for a moment there for some reason. And to here, join that one up. And then we'll go out over this side. And then zoom out a bit more. And we'll go to here. Maybe, I don't know what will happen if I connect that one to that one, so I'm not going to risk it because my bet is that CD wouldn't like it. Um, my bet is it would uh, create uh, some inconsistency in its system, which is the usual case when you do unusual stuff. Select the road, make this one a little curvy. Regenerate that sitting, or set a road rather, and then shift left click here on this node not quite getting it because the gizmo is in the way come on got it all right so let's make a nice big space there nice big space here and that'll do for now actually let's just finish it off by connecting that one to that shift left click to select the road and bring these out like so okay so now grab our terrain heights well save the scene grab our terrain heights 
blend the city to the terrain this is where it it uh, messed up before I have a couple of null points as exceptions again null reference exceptions you can tell I used to be a Java developer saying null pointer exception um, okay we have more progress than last time it has not frozen completely that is a good sign Should change the title of the thing to put Gaia in here as well. CD2 Gaia Pro and 3D Forge. Okay, Gaia spawners are going. So um, Gaia um, can use masks to control where the vegetation is spawned and so on. And what CD does is it creates masks to ensure that the vegetation doesn't spawn on the roads and things like that, which is pretty awesome. Also works with Vegetation Studio Pro. Uh, I haven't actually tested that integration yet, um, but uh, I'm assuming that it does a good job of it. Now we're done. Yes. <laughs> All those fault starts. Right. So let's go over to the editor, turn off the cells and the nodes. And now we have a lovely village with trees growing in between in the gaps here. Nothing growing on the road. That's a complex junction right there. And some uh, some decent housing going on. Now we do have some problems. For example, here, this is a bit narrow and we've put a big building in here. What we can do is we can click show cells, shift left click, and we can click to regenerate that cell. And that should give us a layout that works. It's not doing so because this is too narrow here. So we're going to change the way this cell generates a little bit. We're going to put an inset of two meters and we're also going to say don't huddle the buildings so that will create more space between the buildings like that so that's kind of a um a way of working around that uh, we might be able to get away without having the inset on this one let's have a look yeah there we go yeah maybe i don't know we can play around but we're not going to fine tune at the moment anyway what we will do later is go through fine tune uh, and make things look great but right now we're focusing on getting traffic in so before we did the integration uh, with um, STS into city 2 and so now let me just save this in case we crash out again now we are going to um, uh, add in that actual city traffic so let's go to uh, not Yes, it is under tools. Simple traffic system SGS window. We're going to add in an AI traffic controller, which adds this component in. If we go to the hierarchy, you can see it down here. And then we're going to go down here to configure mode CD2. And we're going to click generate. And that has generated our traffic. We are now going to hit play. And we should have traffic in our city. It's kind of interesting because we're going to have um, modern day traffic in a medieval city with traffic lights and so on. Um, maybe we'll tackle that later on. Here we go. Come on. There we go. There's our cars. And we have a city, small village rather than a city, with cars driving around on a hot sunny day oops went behind the ground below the ground there the traffic lights are working got a bit of a bit of a flicker the post processing isn't playing with the lights very well but uh, we have our city working we've got a bit of a problem over there it's coming out we do need the inset on this cell but it's looking good. Now, if I go and fly away from the city, this particular, um, there's one over there, this particular biome for um, for Gaia uses some of the other 3D Forge assets. So we end up with this area here, a bit of a, a homestead out in the woods. 
which is pretty awesome. So it's fairly consistent. So, excellent. Can we do pedestrians? Let's stop it and see. Now this part may well not work um, on the grounds of uh, it's my code and I'm running with my development code at the moment. You know what, I think let's, yeah, let's run with the development code. Um, the reason I was hesitating was thinking of using the, uh, the, the GitHub resources that are out there, but uh, I think we'd be better off working with the uh, development code. Oops. Um, let me check what I have installed. Okay, looking good. So how do you install those? I'm going to do a separate video about how you actually install those packages. Uh, it will be a quick sort of two minute video um, rather than doing it inside of this one. Um, so if you want to know how to install them later, you can uh, check that out. Link will be in the description once I've put it up live. Um, all right, so what we need to do in order to do this is we need to create a empty object and we're going to call this the city pedestrians oops i wasn't typing in okay and we're going to add a component to that uh, called uh, looks like i don't have the uh, the code for that particular item in so let me just see Nope, I don't. Okay, so I need to grab that from GitHub. Um, now, I do have an, an installable package for most of what we do on this, um, uh, with, with this uh, pedestrian code. Unfortunately, there's two pieces of it that I can't put in the package because they depend on city code and city does not have an assembly uh, reference in it, uh, which means ultimately, I am unable to uh, include the code. So you have to do it manually. I've put it in a gist. The link will be in the description. But basically you copy this. And this is called CD Pedestrians. And you create somewhere in your project a folder called Scripts. Uh, scripts. And then you create a new file, new C sharp script called City Pedestrians. Oops, sorry. That's churning for a moment. It's trying to recompile, that's why. And uh, right now I have a lot of code in here, which is why I use um, assemblies because it makes the recompilation much faster. But uh, unfortunately, can't use it with Cydi. Oh, I should take that out as well. So I just pasted the contents of that gist into that file. Just check I typed the name correctly. I did not. So I need to rename that file. It should be a lowercase y. It actually will still compile anyway. Um, but I like to be consistent. Okay, and then there's one more that I need to pull in, which is this one here. Again, just grab the whole thing. Create an editor folder. And create a C sharp CD editor, uh, pedestrians editor. Now, I, um, I'm working with the publisher of the um, City asset to hopefully include this part of the code in an update to City itself. Uh, and so this step here would be unnecessary. What all this code is going to do is it's going to set up the nav mesh automatically in our city for us. Um, it, it, you can do it manually, you can go through and click on all of the items, but it's quite tedious to do and it's easy to automate and I always like to automate. And that's what these scripts are gonna do. So city pedestrians, um, 
what I want to do here is I want to say uh, I want, need to tell it where my city graph is which is this object here and then I want to say only spawn pedestrians on the pavement I'm British so pavement sidewalk whatever you want to call it so I'm just bringing this back down because this is where I monitor my chat window um, I also need to have some objects to spawn in here so I need to go and find a prefab to spawn in which in this case will be out of my character um, open source code this comes it's an open source character so you can just drop that into there oh I can't drop it into there because it's coming from read only so I need to first drop it into my prefabs folder here and from there I can drop it into here oh sorry my mistake I'm trying to drop the wrong thing in so I need to go into again into my wizards code character space but I want to go into my spawners here and I'm going to create a new spawner this will be in the code I can't create a new spawner there. Damn and blast it. I'll have to do it up here. Create resources folder. And inside here, I'm going to create new wizards code spawned prefab. And I'm going to call it pedestrian spawn definition. Now I can take that prefab, which I could have taken straight out of the um, oh, this code has changed. Never mind, I'll do it this way. There is a new piece of code. I'm going to have to recall, recall, re record this piece, but I am going to finish it here um, first, and then I'll re record with the new version of this. I've actually simplified this process. So go back to my city pedestrians, go into resources, drop that spawner definition into here. And that's what's changed. You don't need to create that. You can just put them straight into here. Um, I'm going to create, let's say, 100 pedestrians um, within a, a decent radius. But first, I need to put the item somewhere near the center. Put it a maybe 150 would be enough. Yep, that looks good. So that is only going to spawn on the pavement inside of that circle. I could put another spawner over there. In fact, I think I will. Um, let's move this fella over here. So we're going to have 100 spawn over there. Let's actually reduce that one to say 50. Um, and there's going to be a hundred spawn over this side over here. Um, okay, all looks good. Now just click this button here, configure city. Oh, there's one more thing I need to do: road crossing and pavement. I need to go to the navigation area, click on nav mesh, and I need to set these up. Road crossing and pavement. I haven't quite figured out how to set these automatically. Um, so if anybody knows how you can program it, programmatically set up these areas, um, that would be great. I would do that. Um, and I'll add it to the code. But uh, in the meantime, you click on areas under the navigation tab and you need road, crossing and pavement. I make road 20. What that means is they will try not to go on the road, but if it's their fastest route, they'll just go on the road. Um, they'll use their crossings um, rather than run across the road if there's one near enough. And then they'll use the pavement in preference to walking across the fields. Okay, so once they're set up, you click the configure city button and that just takes a short moment and now if I go in and I click on this pavement here for example you can see that it is set as the pavement and if I click on the road it's set as the road oops there you go it's set as the road now you can of course go through and do all that manually you don't have to do it automatically but if you've got a big city takes a lot of time um, but in theory now oh baking oh yes I didn't bake the uh, that's reminded me I didn't bake the nav mesh 
Um, I must have accidentally. Oh no 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 no! no. I was I was I'd forgotten about that new code. Told you I was working on my dev code. Uh, new code. Um, I have made it automatically bake the nav mesh when you click that configure CD button and you can see down here that is what it's doing and because this is a pretty large terrain um, it's going to take a little bit of time so uh, I need to oh I actually clicked the wrong button I said go into play mode um, my pedestrians won't work because the nav mesh is not being baked so I'm going to come straight out of play mode and now tell it again to Bake the nav mesh. I should have. I clicked the wrong button because I was talking rather than concentrating on what I was doing. So this will take a few moments. Um, and uh, once it's done, hopefully everything will work. After that, I might tackle turning a horse and cart uh, turning the cars into horse and cart um something i started doing the other night and it didn't turn out to be as easy as i'd hoped uh largely because of the uh, difference between the models and the car um what i could do is give that a go tonight um if i have time but it looks like this is actually going to work assuming that the Nav mesh eventually completes. No reason to believe it won't. Actually, I wonder if the water is set. Let's just check. Um, object. Yeah, the water is set to, to walkable, which of course we do not want. I do have the water selected, right? Just check. Water surface, yeah, it's set to walkable. I do not want it walkable. Not walkable. This object only. Let's abort that, count that bake, because I don't know how far it got. Start again, it'll be much faster now. Because uh, there was a, a very large water plane in there and it was dividing that up, which is why the exporting of tiles took so long in fact i can make it even quicker by not having it as navigation static and actually let's make sure that it's all of the children i don't want any of the water or anything under the water being walkable now that does have the effect of meaning that characters can walk off and under the water um, but I'm not going to worry about that uh, at the moment. It will just look like there's a whole load of people committing suicide. Now we can see it's going much more quickly. Uh, I don't know why Gaia does that. It doesn't seem sensible as a default setup. See how quick it was when you didn't do that? Let's hit play. Takes a little while to start up because there's a lot going on in this scene now. And there we have our traffic. Do we have pedestrians? We have a pedestrian standing in the middle of the road. So that's a start. <laughs> it's probably not a good start, uh, but it's a start. Now, are they even animating? They are animating, but they're not navigating. And we have a problem down here as well. Look, there's a building in the road. <laughs> and the cars are getting just a little bit confused. So let's fix both of those things. All right. So this is one of the problems that we have with City. Um, I haven't quite worked out how to do how to to make it work perfectly. Um, I am using models that don't come with City itself. This is my theme, so I'm going to blame me for poor configuration of the models, um, or rather the theme. Um, there are plenty of things that I think are quite buggy in City, but I'm not going to say this is one of them. Where was that? There. 
Okay, so we're going to select this cell. And we're going to do what we did with the previous one. We're going to say, oh, we're already not huddling the buildings. Not sure that's the right one. Ah. Let me turn off the navigation piece. That is definitely on the pavement, isn't it? All right, so just click generate the cell there. Let's not maximize the lot space. There we go. Uh, I think maximize the lot space is trying to put a larger building in there. That's certainly what it looks like. Um, I don't know if that's a true. Now let's have a look at our pedestrian and see why they are not walking. We have the wander behavior on it, which is good. We don't want them to walk on everything. We only want them to walk on. So what this does is it, it tells them to only pick a destination that is on the pavement. Uh, it doesn't pick other destinations. And uh, what are we doing in the sense of errors and so on? Okay, saying they're not being spawned on a nav mesh, which is interesting. The nav mesh is definitely baked, right? Yeah. And the crossings are there and everything. That's strange. Let's start that again. See what happens. I don't see any buildings in the middle of the road there. I do see a pedestrian in the road. And they're not moving. Got a crash up here, look. What's going on? Oh, it's a pedestrian. <laughs> now, by default, the cars in City are really light. So when they hit a pedestrian, the pedestrian's got a rigid body in it, and so the car just sits there. And this one's actually trying to drive through him, which is interesting. Um, so clearly I have a problem with my pedestrians. Um, what is that problem? Let's see if we can work it out. There's nine errors this time. They are choosing to wander. Let's see, number 27, where is he? Okay, he's not wandering. Do I have an appropriate animation controller on them? Would have thought it would be giving me an error. If not, let's have a look at these fellas. Yep. Oh, looks good. Oh, looks good. So why then are they not actually wandering? Let's start again and have a look at them in the scene view, see if we can see anything on the debug information that's telling us what's going on. Because at the moment, that all looks good to me. They are choosing to wander. But they're not actually wandering. Let's, uh, let's just minimize and use the scene view. Let's go with that fella there. Okay, so if I click on that fella there, he's going to get run over. Oh, that was close. Right, so where is he? Did it selected him in here? I can't see which one it's selected. Oh, what happened there? Oh! Okay, it's just a, an initialization pause, I think. Let's put it back into full screen again. Are they all moving now? No, they're not. These fellows are still not moving, but that one did. Okay, 
So why did that one start moving? And these ones here say that they're not on a nav mesh. This one's buildings on the pavement there. Um, hmm. Let's just reduce the number that we've got um, because there was a very definite pause there. I should really have looked at those in runtime. Okay, so let's reduce the number that we're spawning in. Let's actually get rid of the second spawner to start with and let's reduce this number just so that we're just being a bit more performant on the startup. Um, more than anything else and let's not maximize on play uh, it really is taking a while to start up isn't it that's Gaia Pro for you uh, it's got a lot going on in there and also the setup for the cars is probably quite time consuming too so let me just turn off gizmos up here for the moment find ourselves a pedestrian let's just click on one down here okay he's animating not good um, animations on here because this is an open source package um, and I, I'm not an animator so I can't create good animations for you I'm afraid um, but uh, I do my best um, so why is this fellow not animating for a start? This is Clono1. Uh, okay, uh, he's off. All right, so I think what's happening is it's having some difficulty finding a valid destination. But you can see it is working. Okay, they're crossing by the crossings. Now, they are not currently aware of the traffic. So the fact that they happened to avoid the traffic there was purely by luck. Um, that was not by design in the system. However, I will pretend that it's awesome and <laughs> it was done deliberately. And anyone who's watching will believe me, right? See, he very definitely only went, oh, okay. He, no, he's, he's just British. He knows how to cross a road. Um, Okay, I think we have success.